there and I begin to praise God, he's already there. The moment I shift into praise and worship, he's already there. Somebody need to give God praise because he's already there. He's already there. Hallelujah. Now listen, I'm, I'm not going to be speaking this morning. I asked Pastor Charles if he will bring a word on this morning. And truly, I don't, he don't need an introduction. He don't really need an introduction. He just, because uh, I just made sure my insurance policy was paid up. The minute, the minute he get cut loose, I don't think some of y'all caught that. <laughs> I don't think some of y'all caught that. <laughs> That went over some of y'all heads right there. Hallelujah. What do you mean? What do you mean it's an insurance policy? And it comes by his anointing. His anointing has proven to the ministry that he's worthy. Most pastors wouldn't give up their first Sundays. And his anointing is a, his anointing has proven to the ministry that he's worthy of being able to get up here on first Sunday. The whole thing is if something would happen to me, you need that associated pastor to be in position. And it twinkled on down the line. So I want all of y'all to be ready in season and out of season. I, I used to feel like I had a season to preach. My drought, oh, I felt like my drought came in November. The moment October ended, I had a drought from November to January. I just could I mean, it just, that's what I felt. But I, I, I began to pray over that thing, and I said, you know what? I'm breaking this drought. <laughs> I'm breaking this drought. I'm no longer going to have a drought in November or December or the, uh, the 12 months of the year. There's no more droughts. Hallelujah. But it's all about being ready in season and out of season. Get yourselves ready. Amen. Hallelujah. This is your year for your anointing to flourish. Musicians, praise team, ministers, deacons, prophets, prophetess. The year for your ministry to flourish. The number two plus three is five is grace. God has graced you this year. It's about to go down in 2023. Look at your neighbor and say, it's about to go down. It's about to go down. <laughs> Look at your other neighbor and say, it's about, it's real today. It's real. It's real. It's real. It's real. It's real. real. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's so much slang out there now in this world. Anybody, I'm telling you, it's so much slang. You know, come on. I, I, I've been hearing different things and uh, when I run into young people and I hear them talking and I hear like you don't want this smoke and I'm like what you mean you barbecuing or something <laughs> man you're about to burn something God. so so when you're getting older you 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 got to rely on your nieces and nephews and your look little, little children to, to, to keep you in you know in tune it was a guy I was riding with so many years ago, and he was, we was talking about uh, one, one I, I'm getting ready to bring up the man of the hour in just a moment. And he said, uh, and I, I asked him, I said, what is the slang now for if somebody is about to rob you? He said, they'll say, you know what this is. I was like, today's the 5th of, of March. <laughs> I do know what it is, but... That was a slang. So basically when they came up, it's pretty much, you know what this is. It's a robbery. They don't even got to show you a gun or a weapon. It's automatic in your mind. You know what it is. Amen. To me, like, yeah, President's Day. <laughs> Come on. Let's give God praise. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, you know what this is. You know what this is. <laughs> it's the fifth. 
It's the first Sunday of March 2023. It's about to go down. Amen. Let's receive. Let's stand to our feet and receive the man of the hour. Amen. Come on, give God praise as he come. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Remain standing for a moment. I'm going to read a scripture, then we'll have prayer. Amen. Going to say Matthew chapter 14. Pastor started last week talking about the stability in the storm. And today I'm going to talk about the standard in the storm. The standard in the storm. So and the scripture says a straight way, verse, Mark, Mark, Matthew chapter 14, verse 22. Matthew chapter 14, verse 22, it says, And straightway Jesus constrained his disciples to get into a ship to go before him unto the other side while he sent them out to the way. When he had sent them out to the way, he went to a mountain apart to pray. And when the evening was come, he was there alone. But the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves and the winds was contrary. And then the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is the Spirit. And they cried out for fear. And straightway Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer. It is I, be not afraid. Verse 28. And Peter answered him, saying, Lord, if it, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. And he said, come. And Peter was come down out of the ship and walked on the water to Jesus. And when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid and beginning to sink. He cried, saying, Lord, save me. Verse 31, and immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said to him, O thou little faith, wherefore did thou doubt? And when they were coming to the ship, the wind ceased. So, Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you. For this moment to bring your word before your people, God. Make my tongue the pen of a ready writer, God. And my heart engraved with your word to speak a rhema word from the Holy Spirit that will help change all of our lives, convict, empower, strengthen, encourage, edify, and build us up in our faith. To trust you all the more. We thank you, O oh God. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Amen, amen. Matthew chapter 14. It's a very interesting chapter. You haven't read it. You, should, you ought to read it. You ought to read it. It begins talking about Herod, Herod the king, Tetra, means governor. Or Herod the governor heard the fame of Jesus. And he talks about it was during the time of his daughter's birthday. And he promised to give her anything she wanted. And the most strange, unusual thing, she wanted the head of John the Baptist. Like, my God, my God, why would you want a head of a man? That's crazy. But, you know, that's what was happening back during those times. And then following that, Jesus fed the multitude, which brings us to the encounter of Jesus constraining the disciples, getting to ship, go to the other side while he go pray. And as I thought about standard, we all have certain standards that we set in our house, Right? When your children, you're raising them up, you have your principles, you have your boundaries, you have your standards. And they must abide by your guidelines in order to live in your house. When you get too big for your britches, as my mom used to tell me, you need to hit the door. Right? Because you're violating my standards. My standards are my regulations that I establish for my house. So when you go in my kitchen and decide you want to cook some food, my standards require you to clean up after yourself. The same way you found it before you begin to go in the kitchen and do anything, it needs to be replaced the same way. So when I come back to my own kitchen, it's in the same order where I left it. Which takes me to this point. I was looking in Isaiah 59 verse 19. Isaiah chapter 59 verse 19. says, so shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun. When the enemy shall come in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. And I often pondered in my mind, what is God talking about? 
He makes it clear, talking to the children of Israel, about they're going to fear his name. They mean respect. You're going to reverence God. You're going to acknowledge God. You're going to honor him. But then he talks about it's going to come from the west and the glory of the rising, uh, from the rising sun. So it's going to be visible. It's nothing that's obscured from the people of God, but something that's made known to everyone to see, which is God's glory. And I thought about this. When I read this, I said the glory. So I, on my prayer line this morning with the men, I engaged in a conversation. I said, when you read Isaiah 59, and it talks about the standard of God, what comes to mind? One brother says the standard is God's holiness. I said, right. I said, what's another point? Another brother said it's God's righteousness, his presence. I said, right. And it says, and then I said, what else? Anyone else got anything to say? And it said the standard is the word of God. I said, that's what I was looking for. Because the standard that God established in the spirit realm for the people of God to live by the word. Right? Amen? Y'all with me today? Y'all quiet. You know, and so the thing is, when you know the word of God and you find yourself in the midst of a storm. Pastor talked about last week, stability in the storm. Right? So if I don't have stability, what's going to happen when a storm comes and the ship begins to rock, begins to move and all that stuff, it's going to toss me over because I'm not founded. I'm not grounded. So I'm not anchored in, in the boat. So you have to have your place where your feet are planted, even in a boat. So when a storm does, like a tree, for example, hurricanes, Hurricane Katrina, Katrina shows up in New Orleans. It washes away everything, Right? Trees still stand because the trees are so rooted and grounded to where even the elements can't move them out of their position. God said to his people, I will make them like trees of righteousness. So the tree is something that's stirred, that's founded, it's grounded, so it's not easily moved when situations get in my life to throw me for a loop. So hey, I may sway a little bit, I might even bend over, but I ain't moving. Because I'm planted in God in his righteousness. So when I begin to read this, it says that when the enemy shall come in, and you pause right there, it says like a flood. Because you read in the message translation, it talks about when God would speak to the elements, said, be quiet, be still, stop what you're doing. And it says, like a flood, the spirit of the Lord shall lift a standard against them. In other words, God says, when I begin to open my mouth and speak, what did Jesus do when he was in the boat on one occasion and the disciples were fearing when the storm came and he was asleep? What did he do? He stood up and said, why are you waking me up? What, what's wrong with y'all? I believe Jesus had a conversation. Y'all should have been knowing how to deal with this by now. Because I, I done taught you. I done led you by example. I showed you miracles, signs of wonder. You should have enough faith by now to stop a storm. Woo, Jesus. Oh, my God. This is going somewhere. So, when a financial deficit hits you and you begin to worry and get all mis misconfigured in your face, you get upset, you get uptight because you done messed up your finance, you done shopped your money away, you didn't pay your rent, you didn't pay your bill, the things that had a priority in your life, you didn't raise the standard in your finance to take care of responsibility. Oh, God, bless your name. So when Jesus began to speak, he stood up, said, Why? What, what was going on? They said, Lord, we, do you care about us that we, we about to perish? Come on now. You think they were going to perish with Jesus in the boat? Ain't no way. Because the I am was in the boat. The same one in Genesis said, let us Make man our image our likeness and let them have dominion in the earth and do all the different things you said. And then God spoke different things to the creation, right? So when God began to speak that I am, the Father, Son, Holy Ghost, still connected to I am. So that I am in the human form rested in the Holy ship in a storm, which is something we need to learn. You can pay attention to details. I learned this when I was going through cancer. If you pay attention to the details, there's a message God has for you. So when I'm lying in the hospital bed at midnight, and I, was, I had just found out 
that I, I was going in, I was in the hospital with diagnosis for cancer, right? I knew what it was because God revealed to me at midnight. And there's something about midnight hour. God speaks. So at midnight, I was lying in the hospital bed, and they had already did the biopsy and everything, and they hadn't released me yet to go home. The third day, when they spoke to me, that third day before they spoke to me, that night at midnight, the Holy Spirit said, you got cancer. I said, okay. And I laid there. And I went to the Father. I said, Lord, you said in your word about your leaders, your people, your children, I shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. So according to your word, your standard, Lord, I'm not supposed to die from cancer. Y'all follow me? So as I begin to speak in the spirit, God said, get a book called Health and Health, uh, Health, Healing and Health Scriptures, right? And so I went online, I had my tablet, began to research, and found this book. And it was, God said, the name of the book, and I had never heard this book, God's Promises for Men. Never heard of it until at that midnight. God said, it's God's Promises for Men. And in that book, you're going to find health and healing scriptures. I said, uh. So I looked it up, and everything that God spoke to me at midnight, it happened. So I'm going to tell you now that when you're in your storm and the doctor said you're going to die from a, a critical illness, you're in a storm. Jesus had enough sense in the storm to just do what? Just lie down and just rest in the storm. And which is an indication sometimes you need to shut your mind down and lay down. Shut yourself up and lie down. Stop complaining, stop murmuring, stop grumbling, lie down. Because I found out the word in Isaiah 26 and 3 says, Thou will keep him in perfect peace, whose what? Mind. He didn't say your body, he didn't say your activities, he didn't say your finances, he didn't say your job, he didn't say your children, he didn't say your friends, he didn't say your neighbors. He said, I will keep you in perfect peace. According to my standard. When you get in my word and learn what my standards are for you. Me and Pastor was talking recently. And he made a statement. He said, the meteorologists, when they come on the news to tell you about the upcoming weathers, they're predicting when storms are coming. God showed me something. When, when the, the Pharisees came to Jesus to show us a sign so we can believe in, 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 in the Father. He says, there's no greater sign than John the Baptist is going to come. He says, greater things than these thou shalt do. So one, one thing God showed me, he said, when, when, when they began to ask him these questions, he said, don't you know how to discern the signs of the, of the wind when there's a storm coming? You know how to look in the, in the sky and say, oh, it's getting cloudy, so it's going to rain today. Or uh, it's going to be a scorching heat, so a famine is coming because it's going to be too hot. We have discernment. The meteorologists, they guess. So they can go into the site, the site, the astrology, whatever they do, look at telescopes, do all that stuff to determine what the weather going to be like. They don't know. They're guessing. You can go outside, be a sunny day, and you smell rain coming. Why? God's standard Design where we can be sensitive to know the different seasons in, in, in the elements. Check this out. So that means the different seasons in my life that God gives me discernment according to the standard of the word of God to begin to see what's about to take place in my life if I'm paying attention. If I'm not paying attention, when God says you're about to be hit with a tragedy in your family, you're about to be hit by losing your job, you're about to be hit with a critical illness. You're about to be hit with, with something going to cause depression. And I'm not paying attention to the signs. We all have family members. Somebody in our family, we know they have some type of mental illness. And you can tell by being around them long enough when they're about to shift. And God says, why not do that with the word of God? Know yourself in line with the word of God so when the storms come I'm anchored in Jesus Christ so it doesn't matter what blows my way I'm not moving 
My God. So this scripture here says when the enemy comes in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord should lift a standard against him. That means the breath of God. And this brought me to another, another point. So if God says, I'm going to cause my wind, my breath, to blow against the enemy in your life, to do what? Drive him away. That is so powerful. That is so powerful. Because when I get a revelation of my relationship with God, I don't have to fear the enemy. If I speak the word of God in my situation, the word of God, it validates itself. So just like when a pastor was talking about stability in the storm, right? If I don't have stability, I can't have standards. Because then I'd be like, every wind and doctor comes my way, I'm blowing it two and four. The word talks about that. Because you don't have yourself grounded in Jesus Christ. When someone comes with some other false doctrine and you don't know your word, guess what? They're going to toss you two and four. And God says, we as his children need to get in the word and do like the disciples. Sit and learn from Jesus' experiences. If I don't have a desire to hunger and thirst after righteousness, how can I have a standard? Because my standards then will be based on my fleshly endeavors and not the spirit of God. But when I know the word of God for myself, it doesn't matter what comes into my life. I know what God spoke to me according to his word that I'm going to declare the works of God. I'm going to travel. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. Every prophecy he spoke is going to come to pass in my life because he deemed it so according to his standard. So when Jesus comes walking on the water, disciples begin to fear. How many times you've been in a situation what was unknown to you, and you begin to fear. God says, start a business. And because it's not familiar territory, I got fear, and I doubt myself of the ability that God has for me to establish a business. So the business never get off the ground because I doubted myself, and I doubted God's word. But I, I, I remember reading when God told Joshua in chapter 1, verse 8, he says, you are to meditate on the word of God, keeping your heart in the midst of thy, in, in thy mouth, don't let it depart from you. He said, then the word of God will make you, make, you, make you prosperous and give you good success everywhere you go. So if I know the word of God and it's been deemed so, guess what? It will work. It will work. He said it. So when Jesus can walk on the water, they're like, oh, no, that's a ghost. Oh, no, we, 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 we're afraid. Don't be afraid. It is I. Don't be afraid. Be of good cheer. It is I. That I am defies the elements and walks on water. Did y'all catch that? And he began to walk towards them. And only Peter had enough bravery in himself Lord, is that you? He said, yes. Then if it's really you, Lord, then, then give me the faith. And when you read the scripture, he said, bid me to come. He said, give me the faith to come to you. And as we begin to approach Jesus, he saw him. But guess what happened? Here comes the enemy of deception. Because it says, when he saw the wind, the elements, boisterous, magnified, bragging on themselves. How many times the enemy brag against you because I got something you don't got? That's the wind blowing boisterous in your life. So I come to make you doubt yourself, doubt what God has done for you, doubt your testimony, how God is delivering your life, and make you feel like a worth worm ain't uh, need to go hide on a rock. A worthless worm needs to hide on a rock. Jesus said, Lord, if that's really you, then bid me to come to you. And the word says he stepped out the boat, and what did he do? Begin to walk towards Jesus. 
But when the distraction came, what happened? He began to sink. How many times you begin to sink in depression, begin to sink in your issues, sink in your despair, sink in your problems, sink in your pain, sink in unbelief because of situations that caught you uh, uh, by the boisterous of the elements of your life. The storms of life are the elements that begin to blow boisterous against you to stop you, to cause you to sink. So when you begin to sink, but one thing about it, Peter had enough sense to cry out, Lord, save me. Lord, save me. When you're in your storm and you can't find your way out and everything is going against you and everything falls apart in your life, you got to have an assist in yourself to say, God, give me the strength just to yell out, save me. And Jesus immediately, the word says, he reached down and picked them up and they both began to walk on the water and got into the boat. So I come to tell you today that your situation not bad as it seems because you got Jesus at a distance looking for you to walk you to safety, to walk you to a place of rest, to walk you to your promise and the blessing he has for your life. But all you got to do is have faith the size of a mustard seed. A lot of people don't understand what he's talking about. He's not talking about just a seed, a little bitty faith. He's talking about great faith the size of a mustard seed. Because if you read the story of a mustard seed, it's a very minute seed. You can barely see it. But it produces a great harvest. And Jesus said, if you have great faith that's solid like a mustard seed, doesn't matter what you go through in your life. You can speak to the elements. You can speak to the storm. You command things to change your life. You command healing in your body. You command your mind to change. You command your life to be blessed by the favor of God. And everything has to change because of the spirit of the living God. And when you get that revelation that my storm is not bad like it seemed, trouble don't last always. I'm so glad trouble don't last always. And when you know that, you can rest in your storm. You can rest in the word God's giving you. You can rest in your vision knowing that God will fulfill it. And every time you find yourself in a dilemma, we talk about it all the time, put a praise on it. Put a praise on it. Put a praise on it. Because when you praise God, God says, you know what? I got to get up off my throne because my child is praising me in a storm. And I got to show up right where they need me the most. I got caused the sun to break through the clouds. I got caused the rain to cease. I caused the wind to stop blowing. The billows to stop rolling in your life. Because I am God all by myself. And it doesn't matter what you're going through. Uh, I'm with you to bring you through it all victoriously. Just because you're in a storm don't mean to start doubting God. Just because your head is hurting because you've been worried all night long don't mean to start doubting God. You got to tell yourself, self is about to change. There's a fire on the inside. It's burning there. I can't hold my peace. I got to praise the Lord in the midst of my storm. I got to tell the devil, you thought you had me. I went down for the last count. You thought it was over for me. But I come to tell you today that God showed up 
in the midst of my situation. He left his standards in my life to prove to me he's God by himself. That everything is about to change because I trust in the Lord. When you hold your peace, let the Lord fight your battle. Victory shall be mine. I come to tell you today, it's all right in Jesus. When I trust in the Lord with all my heart and lead not to my own understanding, I hold on to God's unchanging hand. Everything will begin to change in my life. Cause I got the God of glory, the king who fights my battle. He's on my side. He's working things out in my favor that I can hold on and not lose my mind. So many times I felt like giving up. So many times I cried out, what's the use? I just want to throw in the towel, say, forget it, God. I don't want to serve you no more. Because the same old issues keep popping up in my life. But I heard the voice of Jesus say, hold on just a little while longer. Everything gonna be all right. Cause I got you in my will. I got you in my hand. Everything gonna be all right. Dry the tears from your eye. Wrap your brow. Hold on. It's about to change in your life. Just hold on to God's unchanging hand. It doesn't matter how long it takes. Sometimes it may take a month. Sometimes it may take a year. But I got a God who does things instantly. He's able to show up in the time I begin to cry. Before I heard a word from my mouth. I heard you. David said, I cried to the Lord. And he heard me. And delivered me from all my fears. What you fear in the day. God said, you call out to me. I'll cause that fear to move from your heart. I'll make you righteous. Bold like a lion. Just like David and Goliath. He didn't worry about the giants. He said, you didn't talk to the God of people, the God of Israel too long. I want to tell you today, today is your hand. He got his five moon stones. He said, today, God's going to deliver you to my hands. I come to tell you today, whatever you fearing, God said, take your stone. Whatever is holding you back, God said, take your stone. Whatever is hindering you, God said, take your stone. He's like, I give you grace and I give you mercy for the other two stones. He said, take your stone and begin to hold it up in the name of Jesus. Because I know where we're going to wear my stone. The enemy going to get shut down with the word of God. And I know where God speaks. His enemies will scatter. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. So you take your stone and you stand on the word of God. Guess what happens? The enemy think he got the upper hand on you because I'm taller than you are. I'm bigger than you are. I'm wider than you are. But I come to tell you, we say the God of Israel the God who's mighty in battle, the Lord who got the victory, he rises up with healing in his wings, delivering power, and he'll set you free. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. So don't worry about how big your enemy is today. Don't worry about your storm today because it's going to cease Cause can't nobody do me like Jesus. Can't nobody rock me like Jesus. Can't nobody hold me like Jesus. 
when I'm in my storm, I fall down. He'll come down. He'll lie down with me. He'll hold me in his arms and tell me everything's going to be all right. Because I trust in him. I'm depending on Jesus. And he's holding me. I'm depending on my anchor. That's in Jesus. And he's holding me. Do you believe that today? Is he holding you today? Is he your anchor? Is he your solid rock? So when the giants come, then you throw your rock, it's going to hit the bullseye. Because Jesus is the rock. And he's a rock that never fails. Anything he speaks, he said, it's done. And it will surely come to pass because the rock is Jesus this rock is Jesus he's the only one this rock is Jesus want you stay in the little room hallelujah Jesus mm. glory to God thank you Jesus thank you Jesus Lord, I thank you for this word today. I pray that this word penetrate the core of our hearts, the areas of God where we've been struggling in a storm. Sometimes the storms we created that was not even in the plan, but because of unbelief and situations that aroused in our lives, God, it became big and boisterous. But yet, God, you've been speaking. Peace be still. Let your word marinate, God, in our hearts to convict us that when storm clouds come and the billows rage against us, God, we have the same faith to speak peace be still and I thank you Lord God in Jesus name amen amen Hallelujah. come on let's give the Lord a hand praise I don't know about you but I found a standard there's a standard in my storm. The Bible says when the enemy comes in like a flood, God will what? Lift up a standard. Hallelujah. Everybody's standing. Everybody's standing. <laughs>